So, hi everyone, my name is Igor Bula and I've been working with Java over six years. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Nick, I'm a software engineer at Fiverr, I work mostly with Scotland now. Yeah, and today we will talk with you about uh, Spring Java versus Spring Kotlin. Yeah, let's first talk about Fiverr. Fiverr is a very big and cool company that allows people to work together. It connects uh, business with various freelance talents. Yeah, we both legal work at the same project. I joined it uh, two years ago. Igor joined us half a year ago. This project is called Logomaker. We uh, provide a tool which gives people an ability to buy their own logos and uh, receive uh, automat automatically generated deliveries with different variations. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, before we start, one uh, small thing, we have a quiz for you. Uh, it contains 10 Kotlin related questions. So you see the QR code on the screens right now. So you are more than welcome to take it. And uh, at the end of uh, our speech, we will announce five winners who will receive some cool presents from us. So come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, try your best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's start, Nick. So uh, I would like to start with a small uh, Java to Kotlin comparison, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like in general. What is yeah. yeah. the difference? Uh, so first of all, let's start with uh, what is Kotlin and who uses it. Yeah. So Kotlin is a language uh, which is developed by JetBrains company. We all know it. Uh, and uh, it's quite mature one, despite it's not that well spread in the backend, uh, but it's already well used. So, for example, we use it at Fiverr, JetBrains use it, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Uber, Slack, Reddit, Airbnb. <coughs> yeah, and also uh, one thing which you should remember that uh, Google did choose Kotlin as their uh, first priority language for Android. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let Uber. So on Android, Kotlin uh, already rocks, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, yeah. So it's used in production. Yeah, tons <coughs> of applications. Yeah, even the uh, big ones. Yeah, as I've said, uh, Slack, uh, Airbnb, yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay, so uh, what I want to ask is more about uh, what's wrong with Java. So I mean, <laughs> we have uh, a lot of uh, GBM-based languages like uh, Scala. Groovy, Java, why do you need one more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically I'd say uh, there's nothing wrong with Java, like nothing wrong, nothing bad, it's still a good language. We know that it's been on the uh, market quite a while, like 20 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's more than 20 years. Yeah, but uh, basically Kotlin, uh, why do I like it? It provides you pretty much the same functionality. You can do the same stuff, maybe even more, we'll talk about it. But it's simpler. Like mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, I wouldn't say that Java is too complex, but still, Kotlin is simpler. And even when you compare it to other JVM languages like Scala, Groovy, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> okay. Kotlin has super cool syntax. It's simple. Like you just write and you focus more on what mm -hmm. you write, not how you write. I'd so say I focus on the business logic, yeah, not yeah, on yeah. the language itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> regarding Scala, it's uh, uh, very too complex. Yeah, yeah I'd say Kotlin. that uh, among all the JVM based languages, Kotlin probably the simplest, maybe not like the one, but mm -hmm. one of mm -hmm. the simplest for sure. It's, uh, it's super easy. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. I see the agenda. So uh, let's uh, move into deep. So, how does it work? How Kotlin compiles? How it mm -hmm. works? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so basically Kotlin uh, compiles uh, in bytecode, in uh, mm -hmm. class files, uh, the same thing the same. as Java does, yeah. And uh, you can choose a JVM version to which you want to compile. By mm -hmm. default it's mm -hmm. 8, but it can be anything starting from 8. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up to you to, to choose it. Um, yeah, and basically Kotlin compiles in the same thing mm -hmm. as uh, Java compiles. Yeah, and uh, I have some graphs to look more closely into it. Mm -hmm. So here we see uh, this column number two and three from the right. Uh, this is uh, compilation time on Java uh, mm -hmm. with different uh, compilation options. Uh, and uh, column number four and five, it's compilation time on Kotlin. 
So mm-hmm. we have uh, the very same project. It was written on Java and on Kotlin and compiled uh, with different options. And here are the times. This uh, was done by Uber uh, mm-hmm. quite a while ago when they were uh, migrating uh, on Android to Kotlin. They wanted to understand how it works. Uh, so yeah, they did this amazing job. So, so it's basically the same almost. Yeah, yeah. Difference, no difference. is like uh, one, two tenths of a second. <coughs> it's it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's but really nothing. yeah. But here starts some interesting things. Uh, <laughs> on the next graph, we see that uh, while compilation time is the same, yeah, mm-hmm. project is the same, yeah, yeah. we have way less amount of code in Kotlin. Oh, okay. It's yeah. good. So, <coughs> as I said, you focus on the business logic, not on the code writing. You have uh, lots of features which allow you write less, but uh, the same in terms of what you want to achieve. Yeah, and it means less bugs, less code. Yeah, less yeah bots. of course, less code, less bugs, and uh, code becomes more self-explanatory, let's say, so you don't have sure, quite sure. so much documentation and uh, etc. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's really exciting because in Java, when you need to su- run something, you have to write a lot of code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's not the same with Kotlin, it's very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, it allows you really to skip lots of boilerplate. Okay, so let's add some uh, concre- concretion. So uh, what features, what code features Kotlin has mm-hmm. that Java mm-hmm. doesn't? Uh, yeah, so the first thing which we need to mention that Kotlin is 100% interoperable with Java. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what this means, uh, you can have Java and Kotlin in the same project, in the same application. Oh. Uh, you can have uh, Kotlin plus Java class, both next to each other. They mm-hmm. can call one each other, so from Kotlin you can call uh, Java classes, Java functions. From Java code, from Java methods, you can call Kotlin functions. Mm-hmm. No problem, it's everything working. because. Uh, yeah, as I've said, Kotlin is compiled to Java bytecode, so mm-hmm. yeah, they uh, love each other. <laughs> ah, okay, so I, ha- I, I can have uh, code in Java and Kotlin in the same project. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's uh, super easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then moving to features, uh, so the first one, uh, I think it's the, the biggest one. It's the solution which uh, JetBrains, uh, as Kotlin owners, provided for uh, solving the one billion dollar bug. Uh, no pointer <laughs> exception. All know. Yeah, yeah, no pointer. Uh, so basically, what they did is uh, they uh, added new, uh, let's call it wrapper around types. Uh, it's called optional. So mm-hmm. what it does, uh, if you have any variable, mm-hmm. parameter, field in class, whatever, and you know that it may receive null mm-hmm. or may not, mm-hmm. you just mark the type with the question mark, mm-hmm. as you can see here, <clears throat> and uh, that's it. If this uh, variable will receive now, it's okay. It will keep now. If it will receive value, it will have value. But when you use it, you need to check uh, mm-hmm. if it has value before you can access the value mm-hmm. itself. So the main concern, of course, here is safety. Mm-hmm. And uh, the biggest thing comes when, uh, so for example, let's say you have one optional variable, one non-optional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So non-optional means it should always have uh, yeah. yeah, not now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And when you try to assign uh, optional variable to non optional, mm-hmm. uh, you will receive compilation error. So your oh, code okay. it won't even be compiled. So I will get the error when I am uh, implementing something. Yeah, yeah. So you are trying. Uh, yeah, you are trying access. Uh, for example, you are trying access optional variable. You mm-hmm. will receive error. So like, hey you need to uh, use our structures to unwrap the value first, or mm-hmm. you are mm-hmm. trying to uh, assign optional to non-optional, you also will receive an uh, error like uh, you are assigning, but type is different, so please check it. Oh, and yeah, unwrap. It's, yeah, it's cool, because uh, it's safe. Yeah, yeah, main concern is safety, yeah, and it uh, basically solves, uh, like, I'd say 95% of the <laughs> pointers. Yeah. The only Maybe. way is, like, you know, Throw it by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. why would you do it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because basically, if you know that your function can return either value or null, just make optional type. Don't throw it. Yeah, that's yeah. It. And check it. Yeah, and then check. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, so, moving on, next one is data classes. Uh, so, in Java, you know, this pain when you write some model class and you need to uh, declare properties. 
this should basically be it, but mm -hmm. in Java mm -hmm. you're declaring also of let CS mm -hmm. count constructor, getters, setters, equals, equals hash, code, hash code, to string. To string. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what they did in Kotlin, they introduced a new keyword called data. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, edit before you pass uh, on the compilation time, uh, these methods will be generated for him. Ah, That's okay. It. So I get out of the box solution for yeah. equality for yeah. objects. Equality to string all everything which you need to have proper model class. Mm -hmm. One keyword and that's it. Yeah, seems very reasonable. But I would say that in Java, uh, in, uh, starting from version 14, I think, there is mm -hmm. a record keyword, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. means exactly the same. So oh, it's okay. like... Okay, so they are catching up. Yeah, Java <laughs> is catch, catching up. Uh, and yeah, before great. that version, uh, mm -hmm. you could use a project called Lombok, which uh, does the same thing. It generates constructor, it generates uh, uh, equality methods. Yeah, mm -hmm. equals mm -hmm. equal. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's great. That's great. You could use uh, yeah. Here it's out of the box, so it's even simpler. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. So moving on, uh, next thing is uh, extensions. Mm -hmm. So basically, what it is, uh, I'd say it's uh, like we have class of inheritance. Yeah, we can imagine that it's vertical. Mm -hmm. But extension, it's uh, I'd say some sort of horizontal uh, inheritance. Mm -hmm. So you have a class, yeah, for mm -hmm. example, string, mm -hmm. quite popular one. <laughs> and uh, let's say you wanna have a titleized string, yeah, and you need you will use it in many places. So how would you solve it in Java? You will write some util class. Yeah, probably yeah. util class. <laughs> yeah. So in Kotlin, it's uh, slightly simpler. You can write a function which will be called on string object, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can call it like uh, I don't know, like to uppercase. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, I am using another functionality. So yeah, I'm adding yeah. functionality to already existing classes. Yeah, yeah. And then you use it like it was already there. Yeah. So it makes code uh, very natural. Yeah, I think it would be much more readable than uh, importing some util classes and yeah, using yeah, yeah. them with some yeah. other strings. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be horrible. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so next one is generics. Basically, um, as uh, Kotlin is compiled to Java bytecode, mm -hmm. it should be the same because we know in Java generics exist quite a while, but you should remember that in runtime you have type erasure. Yeah. So unfortunately, JetBrains couldn't do anything to it because they had to be 100% interoperable. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty much the same. You have slightly simpler syntax, I'd say. You have a couple of new keywords like in and out, just to mark your types. The type only comes as input, type only comes as output. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to this, they were able to uh, slightly simplify the way how we can cast generics, like if you have a comparable of number, as, is, as in this example, mm -hmm. and then you try to compare it to double, and as you know, double is a type of number, so you can uh, cast it just by declaring the type without any reflection or other stuff that you would use. So mm -hmm. it's just slightly simpler syntax, couple of small features to again make look everything nicer. Uh -huh. okay. I feel like this was the the main purpose of Kotlin, to make it look nicer. <laughs> nicer and smaller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. generics um are support. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have full support, everything you have in Java. Oh yeah. cool, cool. Nice. Uh, and uh, the last thing which I'd like to mention uh, is the inline concept. So basically uh, what is it? So imagine you have a function and this function uh, does some small stuff and then calls another function. Mm -hmm. uh, you already know calls into your stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you mark it as inline, uh, what it does is uh, where in the place where you call this original function mm -hmm. uh, during compilation, uh, you will not have function call there. Instead, oh. all of the code of your uh, function which you to call it will be put there okay so it uh, decreases the stack yeah yeah, uh, yeah. okay step of the execution and uh, so in byte code we won't any we won't even get this yeah, external yeah. function yeah code. yeah yeah so it will be in line so you should use it quite carefully as you probably understood because yeah if you have some lots of stuff going on <laughs> it can end up with really decreasing performance 
but uh, again, if you're using it properly, you're decreasing stack quite a lot, mm -hmm. and it can be faster. And uh, with it, we have uh, also one thing called reify. So basically, if you have some generic type and uh, yeah, you want to use it inside, uh, in Java, you needed to use class. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, to, to, use to show the type. Yeah, yeah. But here, once your market is reified, you can use it as type, not oh. like as class object, but as type itself, without all this reflection and all this uh, huge and uh, okay. strange looking constructions. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I don't have to pass a class actually to a method. Yeah, yeah. You only can Cotton pass does a it type. for me, probably. Yeah, in byte yeah code. I think in bytecode, yes, but uh, again, you're writing not a bytecode. Yeah, writing yeah, I'm writing code. Code. Simple, <laughs> simple Kotlin code. Yeah. It's and very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, one last thing which uh, I would like to mention is coroutines. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a Kotlin approach of solving uh, asynchronous executions mm -hmm. and concurrency and all this thing. So basically, they are just lightweight threads. Uh, they are operating over the Java threads uh, stack, but uh, mm -hmm. you don't need to manage them fully in the way which you used to manage threads. So, for example, this enables you to run, let's say, 100,000 of them, and they yeah, will run. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, basically, yeah, they are just reusing threads. Uh, they uh, uh, try to reuse threads as efficient as possible. So, um, yeah, you don't have, for example, one thread blocked for only one coroutine. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so yeah. uh, they actually can be... So the thread of execution can be suspended, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it can be saved. So the state yeah. of the thread can be saved into heap. And uh, later on, when some function executes, like a delay for a couple of seconds, you will get the state back from heap yeah. and yeah. start execution from this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we can talk about them for hours because yeah, there are lots of different features. It's a killer them. feature for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Java yeah. should also have some like, <laughs> feature. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Kotlin introduces lots of stuff which we would like all to have in Java. Yeah, just to summarize, there are uh, a couple of features that uh, is very important. It seems very important, like nullability check and also extensions. Yeah. Extension of classes, it's very, very, seems very straightforward and usable way yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, moving on, we, mm -hmm. we, we need to talk about some Spring integration. How does Kotlin work with Spring? Uh, what it supports, what it doesn't. Mm -hmm. so can you clarify it? Uh, so, first of all, it works. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, because Kotlin is 100% interoperable with Java. It works in Spring. You can have Kotlin uh, right now, no problem, for quite a while. Uh, what mm -hmm. Spring did already to make it easier for you? First of all, they have, uh, I think, if not all, but most of documentation, uh, all examples you have both in Kotlin and Java. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have uh, Kotlin DSL in Bradle when uh -huh. you create a, a Spring project and you specify that you want to use Kotlin, it will create you already with the Kotlin DSL. Ooh, I, I so. don't have to uh, <laughs> learn Groovy anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. so the oh. Gradle script will cool, be cool. in Kotlin as well. <laughs> yeah. So Hot Reload, for example, is also working. Everything's good. Uh, CGLib proxies also working. By the way, how, how does it work? As, in, as, I, as far as I know, uh, Kotlin creates uh, closed classes. You cannot yeah, inherit yeah. them. Right? Yeah, yeah. by box, default, all have classes are closed. Yeah. So in your configuration, you have to always define your classes as open or no, how it's done? No, how no. It's done? Uh, so basically, you have a Spring plugin. When you work with Kotlin in Spring, you have Spring plugin. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this plugin does is uh, on compilation step, it generates all classes as open. Ah, okay, so it's done for me. Yeah, yeah, it's done for you. You don't need to do anything. So you are writing this Spring plugin and uh, it does it for you. Cool, cool. Out of the yeah. box feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so speaking next, uh, Spring provides lots of different Kotlin specific DSLs. We mm -hmm. will take a look at them. I think they are amazing. And uh, also, coroutines are fully supported. This ah. is another great feature. Yeah, so let's move on to something which I would like to show. So the first one is configuration bindings. Mm -hmm. So you have them in Java, you have them here. They provided um, 
annotations so you can bind uh, all the properties directly to your data classes. Mm -hmm. So you have so full class, you have it with full the uh, methods already generated for you. Mm -hmm. So cool. I I have I have a support for configuration bindings with data classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fully supported. Works like a charm. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, so now let's speak about uh, several DSLs. So the first one is routing. Uh, it's the DSL for declaring uh, routes in our applications. Wow, and, it, lo it looks very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not the just same as in Java. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just define router and then you go on and uh, declare all your routes super declarative way, super explicit again, because you specify everything in one place by yourself, so mm -hmm. it's super uh, visible, super readable, and uh, pretty much self documented. Yeah, and uh, it feels that uh, I see everything because yeah, when I'm yeah. doing auto, um, when I'm using auto configuration from Spring, there are a lot of things under the hood that I don't see. Yeah, yeah, and here, yeah, you have full control on what's happening. Yeah, cool. Uh, so moving on, uh, next DSL is Mocom VC. It's a test DSL for testing our routes and uh -huh. come on, look how it, how it looks. <laughs> yeah, it feels it. It looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so it, it provides you everything you need to test your routes. It's super declarative. It's again self documented, which I think is uh, super important. So basically, when you are working with it, you wanna, for example, in this end expect block, yeah, you wanna mm -hmm. check something. You don't need to go to documentation. You click auto complete, you see what you can check. And I, I, yeah, I see all the <laughs> methods I can Yeah, use. You, you see methods and they pretty much still document. You don't need, you know, to go through documentation, to go to Stack Overflow, to look how should I verify <laughs> status or yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so next one is uh, security DSL. Um, again, pretty much same as we saw in uh, Rotor. Mm -hmm. Super mm -hmm. simple, everything is explicit, everything's here. You have full control, you don't have all the magic going under the hood, you specify everything by yourself. Yeah. Looks just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so next one is, uh, first of all, we should uh, mention that it's experimental one, Kofu. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's This is the DSL to configure the whole application. Uh, they have basically, by the way, um, it's project called Spring Foo. Mm -hmm. And the, mm -hmm. under this project, they have both Kofu and Jafu for Java. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a project under, under Spring Umbrella, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's under Spring Experimental uh, Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it will be out mm -hmm. of Experimental and to move to Stable quite soon because they are working on it for quite a while. I remember first mentions in 2019. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so it provides you again explicit way to declare your application, to define everything in one place. You can uh, basically you can split this configuration multiple parts and enable uh, each parts when you need them. For mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. if in tests you don't need I don't know, login, you cannot include login configuration. So, so it's uh, mostly done uh, because we want to shorten the startup of the application. Yeah, right? yeah. But you, also, don't, you don't have to uh, look through the, all the class paths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, all in one place. Yeah, and it uh, uh, decreases uh, first route handling by uh, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Because it seems like a problem. <laughs> yeah. In Java. Yeah, and uh, yeah, now we got to coroutines. <laughs> so first of all, uh, Web Flux uh, loves coroutines. You have all the support out of the box. Mm -hmm. So mark the function is suspend uh, and use uh, coroutine extensions, which are available for you. Okay, so I just need to write in my controller, I just need to write like suspend function and it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically from the point of view of Spring, uh, Coroutines let you fully consume this uh, Spring Creative stack, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, as as you know, it uh, the, the Reactive Core was designed by Spring uh, in order to be exposed to Rix Java uh -huh. to mm -hmm. all uh, other Reactive their, their own uh, Reactive stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, Coroutines for them is just like a new way to consume. Uh, this reactive stack. Yeah, and Spring so, already does that. It supports. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's fully supported. Okay, so it's it 
it's nice. Yeah, so also, as you can see here, uh, operations as database. Here is, uh, I have an example with Mongo. It's, uh, again, it's supported. You can use also flows, uh, which is uh, one of the coolest of its features for me. Uh, I guess uh, in Reactive you have something similar. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, in Rix Java it's observable, probably. It's yeah, mostly yeah. the same thing, less flowable and observable. It's similar. similar yeah, yeah, so you have full this support for Mongo. Also, you have support for database transactions in Confluence, uh, which is a great one. Mm -hmm, yeah, so mm -hmm. you can run uh, several transactions and uh, Coroutine score will manage to them between threads in the right way. Ah, okay, it's it's actually quite interesting because uh, mostly transactions are bound to some thread. Hmm. Yeah, and here you, you just bound them to Coroutine and then uh, Core does the does that for, you. for us. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it seems awesome. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so yeah. uh, uh, so Spring support Kotlin and it does it uh, writes uh, documentation for Kotlin yeah. and it yeah. allows to do things more uh, concisely and precise way uh, yeah. with Kotlin. So okay, let's move on. Uh, imagine that I have a big project uh, in mm -hmm. Spring mm -hmm. and Java. Uh, how can I migrate it to Kotlin? Should I do it in one go or in chunks? Please explain. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, to migrate project to Kotlin, what do you need? Uh, first of all, you need to add Kotlin as your dependency. All right. uh, for this, you need to add a couple of dependencies and also a couple of plugins. One for Kotlin itself, another one for Spring. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, that's uh, pretty much it. Starting from this, you can use Kotlin in your project freely. Okay. Um, also, as we mentioned before, we have uh, Kotlin DSL for Gradle, so I'd recommend using it as well to keep everything in the same language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's up to you, it works both with uh, Groovy and Kotlin, yeah, uh, up to you. Uh, regarding some general advices, uh, I'd say that uh, you should come up with a rule that uh, like all new code should be written only in Kotlin. Mm -hmm. to, if, if you want to move on, like, yeah, you should have this line where we stop writing new code in Java, new features, we start writing them in Kotlin. Okay. Uh, because Kotlin is uh, fully interoperable with Java, as we know, you can migrate by chunks. As we said earlier, you can have in the same project uh, both Kotlin and Java, they can call each other. So okay, you so can migrate by one, by one, by one, each class separately. Uh -huh. So I can call uh, methods from uh, Kotlin, Java methods from Kotlin, and vice versa. Yeah, 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 fully. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, then I can migrate by uh, just some features. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can migrate by really small chunks, fully up to you. Uh, okay, getting ba back to uh, these additional dependencies that I need mm -hmm. to include in mm -hmm. my Gradle project. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they? Is there some additional libraries? For... Uh, so basically, they are writing just support of Kotlin mm -hmm. and a plugin to compile Kotlin. Yeah, you know. okay. And uh, one plugin to Spring. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much And uh, one additional library, as I understand, that is uh, providing additional uh, uh, collections for yeah. Kotlin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, so moving on, next uh, thing you should remember that uh, IntelliJ IDEA provides you built-in tools for migrations, where you can, in a couple of clicks, uh, transform your class from Java to Kotlin. Oh, okay, so I don't have to write code, <laughs> well, right? Yeah, yeah, if you want, you can just uh, click convert and it will convert. But uh, you should remember that the code style may be not ideal. Ah, it may be yeah. not the way like you want it to be. And uh, speaking of this, I uh, recommend to spend some time on learning and diving into Kotlin features. Mm -hmm. You can do it gradually, no need like to rush dive for a week into documentation and become guru of Kotlin at once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do it while migrating. It's but, a gradual uh, process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should, um, like, what I mean is that you should write, like, Kotlin, Kotlin code using all the Kotlin features, not like uh, Java code just with Kotlin syntax. Yeah, Remember yeah. that you have extensions, you have data classes, scope you functions. have routines, you have scope functions, yeah, use it. 
and yeah. uh, using this you will really have uh, Kotlin, Kotlin, Kotlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very concise Kotlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, uh, as for me, it would just look kind of weird that mm-hmm. you use Kotlin, but for example, you still use uh, util class instead of extension. Yeah, it's Why? pretty weird. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, Okay, thank you, Nick. Moving on, uh, I want to ask you about your uh, personal Fiverr experience. How do you, how do you adopt Kotlin, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, what suggestions do you have for other companies? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so at Fiverr, Kotlin uh, was introduced in 2017, uh, mm-hmm. more than four years ago, and uh, it was introduced in Android. Obviously, um, yeah, and currently it's well used in Android. We already have seventy five percent of adoption rate, mm-hmm. so uh, most so of the code is in Kotlin. Yeah, despite uh, Fiber project is huge, and code base is huge, and uh, we are super dynamic. We are constantly having new features. Uh, so yeah, that's a great achievement for us, I think. Uh, on backend side, Kotlin was decided on in two thousand nineteen. Uh, so we decided to have one first project to POC Kotlin and uh, our approach to Kotlin. Mm-hmm. This was our order system. So we built a totally new order system from scratch ah, okay. uh, using Kotlin. Yeah, it seems like a big job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was quite a big job. Uh, our platform guys gained lots of knowledge during it. And this knowledge allowed us to build a quite mature approach of how we want to use Kotlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, currently we have 40 repositories with Kotlin code, but uh, we use monorepos. So basically, actually, we have, I think, about 100, maybe even more microservices, which are in Kotlin and they are already running, mm-hmm. most of them in production. So uh, uh, you're yeah. saying that you have more than two years Applications are running in production using Kotlin. Yeah, and we are more than fine. <laughs> okay, so they are stable. Cool. Yeah, yeah, everything's stable, everything's working. Yeah, so moving to the way how we work. Mm-hmm. So we have monorepos, uh, we call them Hydras. At Fiverr, we <laughs> love some cool names. Cool names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so inside this monorepos, we have several microservices. Uh, this allows uh, applications to live in the same context. Yeah, share some logic. So our idea is to have one monorepo per one domain. So for example, we work at Logomaker, we have Logomaker Hydra, our monorepo, and there we have several microservices which work for Logomaker. And uh, we reduce amount of repos in general, because mm-hmm. uh, you know we have quite a lot of yeah. microservices. <laughs> And it's uh, sometimes it's super hard to find something. Yeah, it's uh, fine to <laughs> find uh, difficult to find some piece of code that we need. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Also, another important thing is that, uh, of course, we have our core package, and uh, having monorepos, it allows us to reduce amount of different versions of this core package in production, mm-hmm. because we have uh, one shared uh, Gradle build script. For all applications, of course, each application can have uh, their own to add something uh-huh. specific. But we also have shared, and our general recommendation is that uh, we have mm, core package in this shared uh, Gradle mm-hmm. file. Mm-hmm. So when you are upgrading core package, you are upgrading for all your microservices, not only one. Uh-huh. So this uh, yeah reduces uh, amount of different versions in prod. Yeah, so uh, also we have a smart CI process, so we define it per uh, per monorepo, not per each uh, microservice separately. And so I think even with a dynamic uh, templating, it can be even yeah, yeah. Also, less, we, we only use one the dynamic template, yeah, and it is just amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, speaking of our core package, basically just simple application built on top of Spring and Spring Boot. Uh, provides us pretty much everything. <laughs> I mean, like uh, REST API, Rabbit Worker, Kafka Worker, CDC, uh, Logging, Grafana, Business Intelligence Tools, uh, like everything. Uh-huh. All so you need in day-to-day work is there. All, all the important stuff, all the important uh, like features that everyone uses, mm-hmm. you, you mm-hmm. include in some core package. Yeah, yeah. Seems reason- reasonable. I think. Yeah, I think everybody does it. So yeah, nothing to, to do here. 
Okay, uh, moving on, uh, let's talk about Kotlin plans in uh, future, what uh, they are planning to do, uh, what uh, platforms do, uh, do they support, and what will be done next? Mm -hmm. uh, so the first big thing which they are working on is uh, Kotlin multi-platform. So this is uh, a way of having one project which is uh, written in Kotlin and you can build it for different platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see here, you can have some common main, which uh, is library, and you can have GVM main, JS main, macOS, <coughs> anything. Like oh. You can add any platform. So again, you have one library with shared logic, mm -hmm. and you can ha you have some small platform specific uh, to build for this platform. So I have, uh uh, one code base that runs in multiple of environments. Yeah, 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 and it's not only bound to JVM, as you see here. Cool, cool. It's yeah, very nice feature. <laughs> yeah. So another big one, which by the way we use at Fiverr as well, is uh, multi-platform mobile. So uh, idea is pretty much the same. You have a shared library. You have uh, two frameworks for iOS and Android, and uh, you use them in native applications. And, Important thing is that uh, <coughs> they are uh, compiled natively. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So for iOS, you have native iOS framework. For Android, you have native Android library. Ah, okay. So uh, you get uh, the native libraries out of the box. So some yeah, implementations. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's still not final. We should remember that it's still uh, in beta. Mm -hmm. But uh, at Fiverr, we uh, had to use uh, GraphQL mm -hmm. in mobile and we decided to go on with it to have shared uh, networking logic for most applications. Yeah, it seems GraphQL is very, uh, it's probably the best for mobile applications. Yeah, yeah. And uh, although it's uh, still better, we faced some issues, of course, but <laughs> of course. Uh, it's working. <laughs> it's working well. We are uh, quite satisfied with it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, speaking of this, uh, the third and the, I think the goal to which Kotlin is trying to come is uh, Kotlin native. Mm -hmm. Of course, is to have the ability to compile Kotlin natively. Uh, this project is in alpha, they are working on it, and uh, they uh, implemented uh, LLVM backend mm -hmm. and the uh, compiler, which compiles the machine code. Uh, pretty much uh, similar thing which we have in other languages who are compiled natively. So, uh, uh, yeah, this is the place where we will come in the next, I'd say, several years. Okay, I think they uh, they promised to give a better version, I guess. Mm, yeah, yeah, it will be moved. Basically, you can use it uh, already if you want. Uh, mm -hmm. It's available. But, yeah, you should remember that it's still um, in development. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so uh, I have uh, one more thing to add. Like uh, we we should mention that uh, there are some features in Java that are not supported in Kotlin, like yeah. primitive yeah. types, right? Yeah. Uh, what else do you remember? <laughs> uh, I'd say that uh, most of the things are supported. Maybe primitive types are the only ones. I I'm not sure. Yeah, At so least uh, during the time when I develop things, I don't face something like I know how to do it in Java and I don't know how to do yeah. it in Kotlin. Also, I remember that uh, checked exception are, exceptions are not supported in Kotlin, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we need them. Uh, yeah. Probably not a lot of people. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, there are no Sorry. static members but companion objects should <coughs> replace that and it should work passing that. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay uh, also uh, there isn't ternary operator as far as I remember uh, in Gotland. <laughs> there is yeah some workarounds around it but you can have a short defaults version. Yeah yeah short defaults works yeah. works good I think for us. Yeah so wrapping everything up um, Use Kotlin. Use Kotlin. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, from uh, the all, all things that I've heard, it's very uh, concise and precise way to uh, write your applications. Yeah, and yeah. less bugs, less less code. 
Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, it's not happening quite quick enough. It's a long process, but um, yeah, Kotlin is well adopted, so I love the way where it comes, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how it goes. Yeah. Hopefully, Java should add some supports, like the same uh, thing as concurrency in Kotlin, mm -hmm. like coroutines. Java should also add something like that, yeah. I think, in yeah. future. Yeah, yeah, probably they will. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, after this meeting, we will show you the results. Yes, yeah, yeah we will share the quiz results with you. Uh, stay tuned with us. Yeah, contact uh, us. Yeah, contact us for any questions if you want. We have our addresses there. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.